cats and hate outside. I'd have blue balls if I still had any. And with that, we begin the next day. <laughs> it's a great way to start. Let's get our poster. Let's see. Replica toy turning. Let's do that. Paper lantern. Meet the staff. Here, Mickey banner. Okay, hold on a second. Let's see. Um, hmm, can't seem to. Wait, what? Okay, hold on a second. Buying a. Jill just watched Night of the ID Snatchers. Buying a poster of it will prevent her from getting too distracted. But there is no two clay houses is a Kira Mickey poster. Oh, oh, movie poster. How did I how did I just glance right over that? I'm an idiot. Look at the poster. Jill managed to get Gabby off her mind, even if it was just for a little bit. Okay. So we're starting to get some of the more uh, interesting character developments showing up here. Let's check out the D. Model Vory returns to TV. Anyone we're watching it. I don't even have a TV, so useless Juliana's old and busted. Uh, I heard you're talking shit about my waifu like I wouldn't find out. It's going to be censored? I don't think so. The show is rather tame as far as I know. How did I just... Wow. I don't think I've ever seen AFAIK and know what it meant, and yet I just kind of fucking... Wow. I am, bo I am old. I'm going to marry Julianne. Oh, man, I remember watching this show back when I was, like, 10. I think I discovered porn thanks to it. We will never discover Rule 34 for the first time again. Why keep trying? Never seen this show before. Is it any good, or is it just a meme? It's a meme show. There's nothing outstanding. What about the sequels? Are those going to be broadcasted as well? The sequels are shit. Is your lip trembling? No. Y Yuru Yuri, new season. Oh, yeah, this is the, an this is the, the lesbian anime. Uh, Yuri Yuri, new season. Uh, it's finally here. I can't believe I'm alive for this day. Thank you, based god. All boards reported. What are their boards, you idiot? Nice, more stupid Moe blobs. YY gets new season, but the actual best YY is still up in the air. My internet service gets cut off tomorrow because I can't afford it anymore. Wake me up! Get a job, you stupid neat. Oh god, here we go. Pair of hot cocoa, sitting comfy couch, put on my favorite mega Christmas sweater, see snow falling outside, turn on the heater, get my blanket, watch glorious YY, and fall asleep when it ends. I am the comfy. I wish I was as comfy. Have work tomorrow. Enjoy the Yurus for me, danger. Aw, good for them. Ah, good for them and their lesbian based anime. Taylor the Brain, hired of name change request. What? T tired of name change requests. A couple weeks ago, we wrote about Taylor, one of the brains from the Sola Anima Project. One of the highlights from the interview that was unfortunately stripped from the finished version was a stray comment about how many people asked Taylor to change their name to Brian on a regular basis. I know people try to be funny, but I won't change my name for a punchline, Taylor told the AE team. I like the name Taylor, and there's nothing wrong with Brian. I just won't be a part of the joke. My life is worth more than that. Taylor's look, currently looking at their chances at being a senator in the upcoming electoral season. I'd vote for a brain. Yeah, go Taylor. Parliament discusses. <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's another. Oh, God. Parliament discusses anime influence during an unusual meeting held at Parliament today. Delegates discuss the effects of anime on the population. It's nothing but filth, trash, a representative for the Workers' Party yelled during the meeting. If I could choke every single writer and animator out there, I'd do it. i choke it with my own enhanced hands. <laughs> Several anime studio heads have responded to the news. I think they would bet it if it wasn't bringing so much money to the local market, Yamake, a producer, told the augmented eye during a phone interview. I do agree that anime is trash, but I'll save the genre. You can trust me. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Just go. Just, just go. Just go to the next one. Biker gang arrested after vandalism during protests. Great. Awesome. 
Members of one of the largest biker gangs in the Motor City sector were arrested after the group's leader and her entourage were found at the site of a protest last Friday. There are a lot of empower females in the storyline, and I think that is awesome. Their leader, commonly known as the Chris on the streets as Christine Love, declared to the press that they were unjustly arrested and that her gang was only there to defend protesters from the White Knights. They're afraid of us. Again, right to a country accent. <laughs> they know they can't take us down in the streets, so they use protesters as a shield, and we had no option but to surrender, Love told AE during a phone conversation. They're currently detained and waiting for trial. The formal charges are unknown so far. Isn't she a game developer? She's many things. Okay. All right, so we got all that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save to back up. Boop. And go to work. Tuesday, December 27th. Good evening. Hey, Jill, let's have a New Year's party this Saturday. Isn't that a bit soon? Why, did someone famous get killed at a New Year's party? No, I mean, never mind. Sure, I'm in for it. Great! And Gil? He's coming too. I mean, it's not like he has anything else to do. Hey. No, I mean, where is he? He was escorting a client of his to the station. He shouldn't be he should be back any second now. Back. See? So you come into the New Year's party too, Gil? It's not like I have anything else to do, so. I told you. We're depressing people. Oh yeah, the kid from the other day, Gabby, I think you called her, asked me to give you this. I believe it's a note. A note? Gabby? Let's see. First of all, I want to apologize for my behavior before. I was still hurt by my sister's death, and it wasn't fair to take out all the stress on you, let alone put the blame on you. And so it feels weird to ask this of you after how I treated you, but I really want to talk to you. I want to catch up, to chat for a while, do what you were doing with me before I lashed out. I want to understand this freedom you talked about, the fear that drove you to a fight with my sister. I'll go back to the bar on the 31st. I won't take much of your time. If you don't want to see me after all that, I'll understand. But please, I really want to talk to you, Gabby. Wow, that girl has a big vocabulary. She was always the smart one. And the 31st is written in different handwriting. Oh, yeah, she asked... Oh, that, that. She asked me when would you be here and relatively free, so I told her about the party. I also assumed you'd say yes to the party, which might not have been the best idea now that I think about it. Boss, I'm, I'm having second thoughts about coming to the party. What? Why? Because I really don't want to face Gabby again. Now it's coming back to me. What drove me to never go back and apologize after all these years? Fear and shame. Shame because I know I made a hideously stupid mistake. And it's painful to face your mistakes. And fear of what they might say. With Lenore, we never broke up formally. So I was always afraid that if we were to meet again, she'd break up with me. And I don't want Gabby to tell me that she hates me to my face. Lenore was in the right to break up with me, and Gabby is in the right to hate me. But I don't want her to. Maybe if I never see her again, she'll never tell me that and... Jill, you idiot! Baka! Uh, eh? You're thinking backwards! Didn't the letter say she wanted to understand you? If you bail out on this, she will hate you! Not only that, but you're getting a new chance here! Do you want to live the rest of your life running from another memory? Didn't you just say to Armitage that you hated feeling like that? Armitage? Titty hacker! Oh my right. I don't know what happened when you fought with that girl's sister, but now you have a chance to make amends. And not only that, you gave us watching your back. So I want you to think about this. One day of fear or a lifetime filled with regret? Which one do you pick? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I hated feeling like that. I won't run away this time. Good, because I would have gone to your apartment and dragged you out of there if need be. Hey, boss. Thanks. That's what friends are for. Yeah. Anyways, let's start the day. Good on you. That was a great scene. Let's just, uh, I'll just get rid of, like, the first six here and be like, boop, 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 uh, boop, and boop. Time to make drinks and change lives. Seriously, though, it's the second note that was stirred such feelings in me. Second one? Two weeks ago, I got another note in the mail. This one is from Lenore. Was that the envelope you took away from me in a panic? 
Yep. Foreshadowing. You haven't opened it. Why not open it with Gabby? You're facing one fear. Might as well face the other. Maybe. Don't push it, Chief. I'm not. I just know she's capable of doing all that. I'll go secure stuff for the party. Call me if you need anything. Keep it up, Jill. Thanks. Happy holidays! Someone's happy. We held a party for the staff and their children. You should have seen the faces of those kids receiving gifts. Nabbing that Santa suit at the last minute the other day was totally worth it. Santa dresses seem to have been... Oh, wow, yeah, Baba. Santa dresses seem to have been popular this year. I heard they were sold out. She is so happy. Look at that. I heard they were sold out in most places. There was this weird shortage of Santa suits, but luck was on my side this year. <laughs> Sorry for that outburst. Why? You look so happy. I felt happy too. I know, right? You shouldn't hide your happiness. Um. Anyway, can you get me a cobalt velvet, please? Sure. Cobalt velvet for Stella. That's the downside to having cat ears. I feel like it'd be a lot harder to hide your emotions. Maybe it would be easier because you have to, like, convince yourself, like, to do better so you'd be really good at hiding your emotions. Here Thanks. Are you meeting with Say today? She should be here in a bit. She told me she wanted a drink here, and since I was coming here too, sadly I can't stay for long. I have some errands to run. How has she been lately? She's better. Her wounds have been healing really nicely. If only she'd stop scratching at her bandages so often. What about her eye? Eye? Oh, hers. Sorry. Ugh, come. It'll take longer to heal, but as long as it's kept clean, there should be no problem. But to be honest, I'm more of worried. I'm more worried about her emotional wounds. She doesn't show it, but she's had depressive bouts from time to time. Who can blame her? Her life changed completely. The job she loved no longer exists. She was used as a disposable pawn in the whole bank affair. I'm afraid it will all make her go back to her old ways. Old ways? There was a rough spot when Say was 18. Her mom's clinic was about to close. Then her biological father, who was an asshole, showed up. And then the teachers at her school didn't help. Say is not a slow learner by any means, but her way of learning stuff is different. She needs equivalences to things she knows. She needs to get a bit in her mindset. Once you get this, she's a fast learner, but schools don't have that kind of patience. They basically branded her a failure. She even dropped out. I would have suggested a special course somewhere else, but that would have offended her. She's always been against being labeled as special or different. Anyway, Say was totally different during that period. Foul mouth, short fuse, always frowning. Total opposite of how she is nowadays. From time to time, I see that old look across her face and it scares me. You're comparing her to her teen self, though. People mature. Maybe she'll show signs from time to time, but I bet Say knows better than to go back to that. I hope so. Get me something cold and sweet, will you? Sure. Cold and sweet. Sounds like I've heard that one before. Uh, Moonblast. No, that's not. Wait, oh wait, that's is it on oh that's right, it's it on rocks. Yeah, it's rocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, one, two, two. All on the rocks and blended. Blend it up, blend it up, blend it up. Blend it up, blend it up, blend it up. Blend it up, blend it up, blend it up. Moonblast. Thanks. This is the kind of stuff Say asked for, you know? I'll let you mention it. You know, back when Say reappeared, it seems that she came here first. Oh yeah, she told me that. Glad she found the familiar face after all that chaos. Did she tell you we had a talk at the back of the bar? You did? Well, it's nothing that important, but she was devastated, you know? She was afraid. Tired. It... It hit me quite hard, not only after seeing her covered in bandages, but also after seeing her so cheerful before. I guess I should be thanking you then. You what? When I met her, she told me you calmed her down quite a bit. I did? I'm guessing with all that was going on, 
The desire to not worry me weighed on her. It, it had happened before. So it's good there was something else for her to share her stress with. Someone else. Thanks. Um, sure. I don't think I did anything noteworthy, but sure. I've been wondering, can you really be so calm in the lower parts of the city? Hmm? I mean, the straits are not exactly safe. And a cap boomer is sure to become a target. Well, I have my security staff with me at all times, so there's no problem. Besides, this part of the city is comfier. Come again? <laughs> sure, uptown is cleaner and maybe more secure, but it's also too sterile. Around here, you can actually feel the warmth of the people. You feel there's people living. I especially like going to a busy food stand. I feel a warmth there that Uptown doesn't have. It's also easier to talk to people. You finally came. Welcome. If you try to talk to someone in the upper part of the city, they either shrug you off or flat out ignore you. People around here are a bit wary, but they're also more likely to talk to you. Not that things aren't nice there, though. Can I get you something? I feel like having a beer. Make that two. But I just want one. I I'm asking for one for me, adding one to your order. Oh, that right. Two beers for the girls. These two are just way too adorable. I know, like, they talk about how uh, they really aren't a couple, but it's still, like, it's they're still ad adorable. I also like that... Uh, Obviously, you can tell we're on the right track with the routes because uh, they brought up our conversation behind the uh, the office, which I remind you would not have happened if we had messed up Say's drinks earlier on. But just to make sure, yep, two beers. Here you go. Thank you. Thanks. Say, you should have seen the kids after you left. They were all playing with the toys you picked. You nailed it again this year. They were all asking, where's Say? Where's Say? Why do they call you just Say when they call me Auntie Stella? I don't like that old. <laughs> don't worry, they still like you. Sorry I had to leave, but Mom worked overtime that night and I couldn't leave her alone. What happened? Well, there were fireworks and some dog thought it'd be safe to hide in a jar. <laughs> little guy managed to get his head in a paw inside before getting stuck. And it was plastic, so they couldn't just try to break it. That's messy. She needed someone to hold the dog while she worked. Poor fellow was scared. Well, I'm out. Oh, yeah. We'll have a New Year's party this Saturday if you want to come. Sure, it's better than depressing myself with my dad's woes about the next fiscal year. I'll be here. Bye, Jill. Bye, say. Careful. Please come again. You want to come, too? I'd love to. I'll also make up for not coming last time. How was the party? Pretty nice. We played truth or dare. Had some fun. Broke some glasses. Ate lots and lots of food. Seriously, looking back, the amount of food was ridiculous compared to the number of people who were there. Better leftovers and left hanging, don't you think? Yeah. Can I get you something? Let's try something classy. I'm still hitting that button by accident. Oh, and the classy music comes in right as that happens. Classy. How about a Mercury Blast? We're gonna turn things down a minute with a classy song and a classy drink for a classy lady. Yeah. Taking it down, taking it down, taking it down. Yeah. Alright, that's enough of that. Something classy. Yep, this is the thing. Stella came in quite cheery about Sunday. This Sunday? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, her birthday is actually the 25th. Really? There's a weird story from when she was a kid. She heard Mega Santa's story, and somehow she got it into her head that by being born on the 25th, she was a spiritual reincarnation of the original Santa. It made her start giving out gifts like crazy. She got over it, but the gifting stuck to her. Spiritual reincarnation? Well, the story says the Redmond family destroyed Santa's spirit, and that Mega Santa was reborn as a manifestation of the Christmas spirit. The story gets even crazier. She thought she was the old Santa spirit in a new body. <laughs> that girl was delusional as a kid. Huh. Speaking of things you did when you were young, 
Stella mentioned she'd worried about you going back to your old ways. Something about a rough period where you were angry or something. Oh, that. It's sweet that she's worried. But I won't go back to those days just like that, though. Even if I face the same situation, I'm more mature, you know? I'm not a teen anymore. Expected as much. Told her as much. Hey, can you give me something bubbly? Sure. Bub something bubbly for a bubbly girl. Alright. Uh, Sunshine Cloud? No. Bubbly. Looking for something bubbly. Looking for something bubbly. Something, something that tastes better than frothy water. Come on. Come on. Dang it. Come on. Oh, wait, 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 Fringe Weaver, there we go. And no, I'm not just getting her this one because it costs more. She deserves good. Age mix. Bubbly for a bubbly girl. Bubbly, bubbly. Hey, Jill, wanna know how Stella got her eye? Huh? I feel you shouldn't tell me that. She told you my story. It means she likes you enough. It's fine. You remember when I told you one white knight saved me from another? Well, it's about the other one. Apparently he was running away after doing something. Dunno. We were at the park and he held us hostage. At one point they tried to approach and he just... He gouged Stella's eyes out. I tried to stop him, but he just went and kicked me. I still remember that kick. I could feel my ribs breaking. There was a pain in places I didn't know could feel pain. From time to time, I still relive that day. I could hear my torso tell Stella's screams. It's chilling. I briefly regained consciousness after the kick when I felt like I was being lifted. The white knight that attacked us was on the floor, not moving. I was on another white knight's shoulder. He took his helmet off and put it on an anguished Stella. I passed out, and when I came to, I was in a hospital. Apparently, the kick ruptured a couple of organs, and I was put on emergency care. I woke up because Stella was punching my leg, telling me to wake up. Damn. Just damn. What made you bring this up? I bring this up because that guy that was here last time I came, I think he's the one that saved us. No fucking way. Virgilio? Really? What made you think that? Sure, more pounds in years, but I'm pretty sure it's him. But there's something about his face I just can't dismiss. I'd like to see him again. Do you know how? Do you know the steampunk museum? Ask for Virgilio there. Gotcha. Well, I'm done for today. Thanks, Jill. Please come again. I'll take my break, Gil. Sure. That is probably the most mind-blowing line in this entire thing is the idea that Virgilio it just comes full circle not just is it that he was pretending to be this weird guy and actually is like a cool dude but like the idea that like he really was a super cool dude it's like ah I can't take it I just can't take it I wonder if I left food for my cat meh Okay, I'm hit. Um, Dorothy? You won't get through the bar anytime soon. You can stop walking. Oh, honey. You want something? The usual, I guess. Usual. 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 She wants the, uh, she wants the piano woman again. Things are looking very bad for our pep star. Here. This is nice. 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 Okay, you're freaking me out. What's up with you? Hey, honey, how do you know what's real? Oh, fuck! The robot is becoming existential. 
I mean, how do you know if what you see is actual thing? How can you tell if what you see around you is actually happening? What tells you everything is not actually a fabrication? What tells you I'm not just a simulation in a computer? Oh god! Self-actualization! And those ponderings brought you to the bar? What? Oh, I'm in the bar. Am I? Dorothy. So you're having a solipsis... Solipsistic crisis of sorts? Solo what? Solipsism. The theory that the self is the only thing that can be known to exist. See? That's another thing right there. That word. Solipsism. What does it even mean? Where the hell did it come from? Well, solace means alone and ips means self. Yes, but how did it come to be? Do you expect me to believe that a lot of people just randomly decided to make noises? And decide, hey, let's make this noise mean this! It doesn't make sense. Words don't make sense. I've been repeating words for a long time and they stop making sense. Why? Calm down. It's just semantic sati satiation. Stop making up words, honey! And then there's this counter. How can I be sure the counter is really there? It is. Please stop tapping it. Hold on, just making sure. I should make her a drink. At the very least, I'll have something to throw at her. Uh, let's just make another piano woman. She needs more piano women. Whoop! Fuck that one up. Whoop, whoop, cut off the screen. There we go. Stop tapping the counter so much. I'm this close to throwing this at your face. Sorry. <sighs> so let's start from the beginning. Since when did you have this existential crisis? Since earlier today, I think. I was remembering the good times I had with my, with my guardian. But I don't know. It was all too sudden. I was thinking about everything that happened from a week ago until now. How much fun I was having, how much I loved everyone around me. Out of nowhere, the thoughts started piling up in my mind. What is love? What is fun? Are those feelings real? Is all that real? Am I real? What tells me I'm actually in a body? What if I'm just some computer somewhere thinking it has a body? What if I'm just a human girl in a comatose dream? What tells me that you're real? Eh? For all I know, I might just be a figment of someone's imagination. Or even just an AI simulation in some computer that thinks it's human. I've been there, Dorothy. That existential doubt and crisis, that uncertainty about whether or not things are real. It was a couple of months only, but I remember having panic attacks and scratching my arm to feel something. The panic attack gave me a rush of adrenaline so I couldn't feel a scratch and the fear got worse. What did you do to get over it? Oddly enough, I read a book. The Last Rain in the World, one of my favorites. At one point, I cried with the book, and then I realized I was crying over fake things. A story and its characters. I didn't care less for them because they were fake. Why not think of reality like that, too? Even if I'm a figment of someone's imagination, I'd still care about you. That's what I told myself, at least. It wasn't immediate, but that focus helped me. <laughs> I like it. Hey, can I take this drink? I made it for you. Thanks. Okay, then. <laughs> Phew! Why did you throw it on your head? To feel something you made. And? It burns. and it itches a bit. I'll get you a towel. Delivery for, uh, Dan and Zet. Ah, I've been here before. Mr. Mario! Welcome back. I have a delivery for Dana Zane. Who's that? She's my boss. I'll get it for her. Right. Sign here, please. It's a big package. I wonder what's inside. You should open it. If it's something perishable, maybe it'll need to be refrigerated. Let's see. It's a wiener. A really big wiener. Hey, honey. Hmm? The big package has a big wiener inside. <laughs> well, your boss knew such a thing. I don't know how she'll cook it. Perhaps she'll chop it? Honey. Seems the wiener is too big to eat correctly. Stop.
off. Maybe you could prepare some right now. What do you say, honey? Do you want some of your boss's wiener? I don't. <laughs> Seriously, Jill. She's the one making the joke. And you're the one trying not to laugh too hard at them. Anyway, we all know if we dare cook this without her permission, she'll hang us upside down. She'll hang me upside down. Hey, Jacket Boy, what's your name? Um, uh, Mario. Come on, Mario. I'll buy you a drink. Huh. He might have another delivery, you know. This is the last one, actually. I'll accept your offer. I'll have a sunshine cloud. And you? I'm fine. Sunshine cloud for Mario. <laughs> Your big package has a huge wiener inside of it. <laughs> hey honey, hey honey, hey honey. It's a huge wiener. <laughs> can't can't eat this huge wiener. Here. Thanks! Hey, um call me Dorothy. You can also call me Darling for the right amount. Yeah, Dorothy. Why don't you buy me a drink? Just to let you know I don't swing that way. What way, Willem? I'm a man's man. I like men, okay? Not that there's anything wrong with liking women, but... Oh, don't worry. I wasn't hitting on you. I was thanking you. Thanking me? Your package let me see Honey here laughing like an idiot. It's easier than you think. That made me happy, and I don't know. It fit with what she was telling me earlier. I'm more calm than when I entered. Glad to help, I guess. Well, duty calls. Bye, Mario. Bye, John. Bye, honey. Enjoy your big wiener. Out with you. She seems like a nice girl. I don't mean for it to sound like I... I get it. I get it. Don't worry. You like guys. It's clear. Speaking of, you like motorcycles, don't you? I do, yeah. You been to the Motor District? I spent all my free time in the Motor District, actually. Why? Is it true that they say about all the illegal races going on there? You're not a, you're not a cop, are you? If you're a cop, you have to tell me or else it's entrapment. Well, I mean, there are legal races, but there's also a semi-legal league going on there. Semi-legal? The authorities acknowledge that there's races going on. They don't know what goes on in them, however. Modified engines, casualties, substance abuse. The illegal ones end up being safer in the end. Huh. Have you heard about a biker called Christine Love? Miss Love, of course. Everyone knows who she is. What about her? Is her gang as dangerous as they say? I don't know. Nobody knows. Excuse me? They look intimidating enough, but truth is nobody's facing directly. Moreover, nobody wants to be the one that got beaten to a pulp if they turn out to be what they seem. So her gang is just there, menacingly doing their own thing, not bothering anyone. Oh. Do you want anything else? I have a piano man. All right, I'll sing you a song to the piano man. Again, I'm curious if not reading the articles would have this conversation still be the same. But who knows, because I always read the articles. On the rocks and mix makes a piano man for Mario. Yeah, this is nice. This will sound weird, but do you believe in Replobots? Replobots? There's a belief that some Lilim out there was designed to perfectly replicate a particular human. That someone or something replaces those humans with such Lilim. Thus they call them Replobots. You know a lot about this. I don't. It's in the most magazines nowadays. Well, it's the first time I've heard of it. What about it? On my way here, I almost ran over my neighbor. He just showed up in the middle of the street. And I say almost because he moved really quickly out of the way. Then I went to deliver a package, and somehow my neighbor was there. Almost immediately after the whole thing. And he was there the whole time. Maybe it was something on that looked like him? He had the same looks, clothes, and mannerisms. Trust me, you know a perfect replica when you see one. And you saw the kid Lilum here? That could easily pass off as humans. There are even Lilum idol singers nowadays whose voices can pass off as human. They could be passing off as humans under our very own noses, replacing us little by little. Cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. At this point in time, I really doubt it. Lilum behavior is a bit different. You can easily tell someone's a Lilum because they seem... How do I put this? 
They don't care about risk and danger as much as we do. They treat risks with a lot more leniency. Still, be careful. Keep an eye out for uncanny doppelgangers. I'm leaving. Thanks for everything. Please come again. What's your take on the Repplebot thing? I sound exactly like Mario still. Do you believe in them? Do you? Not really, but I've asked you first. When I was in high school, I had this irrational fear of aliens. I was paranoid that they would come. What would I do then? I remember I lost lots of sleep because of it. That doesn't answer my question. Let me finish. After many months of fear, I reached a conclusion that might as well apply here. It's useless to be afraid. I'm but a simple woman. I wouldn't be able to do shit against them. So I'd rather live without being afraid. Because the memories of not being afraid will be my only solace when the nebulae crabs invade. I mean, uh, when the Rebel pots come. Fucking nebulae crabs, goddamn. Jill, are you still afraid of aliens? What part of it's useless to be afraid didn't you catch? Right. By act, did anything happen? I discovered I had the sense of humor of an eight-year-old. Did anything new happen? Hey! They brought you a package. Ah, uh, yes, my curated wiener. It's a gift from my folks. It was delayed in customs, but here it is. You guys want some of it? <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> That's the pocket money. I'm out of excuses. <laughs> Fucking just... Here, yeah, have some of my wiener. Oh, that's... That's some good shit. Oh.